the Song of Songs or the Song of Solomon. Um, I'm starting this uh, series this morning, um, beautiful morning in July. Uh, everything is coming to fruition, the, the flowers are bursting and the fruit is on its way I guess. Which is a, 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 a good um, introduction to the Song of Songs. I've spent a long time trying to gather together facts and figures and draw them together into a unit and trying to compose something and then just before I started this morning I found um, the introductory paragraph in my Bible which is the, the book that expresses what I want to say almost exactly so I'm going to read it is the uh, heading for the Song of Solomon it says the Song of Solomon is a love song written by Solomon abounding in metaphors and oriental imagery Historically, it depicts the wooing and wedding of a shepherdess by King Solomon and the joys and heartaches of wedded love. Allegorically, it pictures Israel as God's betrothed bride, reference Hosea 2, 19-20, and the church as the bride of Christ. As human finds its highest fulfilment in the love of a man and a woman, so spiritual life finds its highest fulfilment in the love of God for his people and Christ for his church. The book is arranged like scenes in a drama with three main speakers, the bride, Shulamite, the king, Solomon, and of course, daughters of Jerusalem. Interestingly, Shulam Shulamite and Solomon are derived from the same word, one being male, one being female. Um, which is uh, so important in our, our day to emphasize the relationship between man and woman and uh, to have a book called the Song of Solomon which actually goes into the issues that arise with, within that kind of relationship. The Hebrew title Shir Hashirim comes from Song of Songs 1-1, the Song of Songs. This is in the superlative and speaks of Solomon's most exquisite song. The Greek title Asma Asmaton and the, Canti the Latin Canticum Canticorum also mean Song of Songs or Best Song. The name Canticles Songs is derived from the Latin title because Solomon is mentioned in verse 1 in the first chapter the book is also known as the Song of Solomon yes now there are various aspects of this book I need to touch on and one is related to uh, Romans 10 verse 10 for with the heart a person believes in Christ as Saviour, resulting in his justification, that is, being made righteous, being freed of the guilt of sin and made acceptable to God. And with the mouth he acknowledges and confesses his faith openly, resulting in and confirming his salvation. What is of interesting and of great significance to me is the organ of belief is not the brain. The organ of belief is the heart. And so with the heart a person believes in Christ. It's no good just having mental knowledge. It has to be a response of the heart to this truth. And that, that again is why this book is significant because it's a, a it's a song, it's a poem in the language of the heart. So the heart can more directly relate to what is written than perhaps would be normal because we, if we try to use our brain to understand this book, <laughs> we will get in a mess. Solomon was an ancient king of Israel. 
probably in its most successful phase of the history of that nation. Solomon wrote thousands of songs, but when he came to it, he entitled this song, The Song of Songs, the, the most important song of all. What he considered to be of importance is um, put in the section of the Bible which is called the Wisdom Literature. Here is a clue as to why it might be the best song of all, and certainly of interest to us in our generation, where we've let, let go of many of the values that are written in, within it. It's also in the centre of the Bible, right in the middle of the Bible, eight chapters actually, uh, works out as nine full pages, so that will cause you a little preparation if you're planning to sing it, but what I would suggest is that you use it as a prayer manual and repeat back to God the things that he says to you written in it. <laughs> 